their bait. We cannot take the overcorrection approach that they want to. Eight years ago, the deep state was real. When Donald Trump came down the escalator. Thank you. So I thought it would be fun to go on a manhunt of government gangsters together. And I'm so proud to be at CPAC with so many great Americans who represent Donald Trump's army to take this country back. And that's what it's going to take, an entire army. And we all have a job to do. We have the benefit. We're blessed by God to have Donald Trump be our juggernaut of justice, to be our leader, to be our continued warrior in the arena. But we have to fill that arena with Americans behind him who are going to take the fight to the mainstream media, who are going to take the fight to the corporate bureaucracy that controls the swamp, who are going to take the fight to the national defense industry that has monopolized war and sent our sons and daughters to die for other people's fights. We are going to put an end to that behind Donald Trump. And we are going to do it together. What I want to talk about is um, you guys have been so kind to make Government Gangsters My Book a bestseller. I thought there would be no better place than to announce what you just saw, which is a joint venture with Steve Bannon and War Room Entertainment to launch conservative films back into the ecosystem. So Government Gangsters, the movie, is the first one, and it's coming out in the spring, uh, just in a couple of months here. So we're very excited about that. But here's the thing. Eight years ago, the deep state was real. When Donald Trump came down the escalator in 2015 in Trump Tower, the deep state was already moving at 100 miles an hour. But they, the deep state, projected on us that we were the neocons, we were the conspiracy theorists because we dared to call them the deep state. And when we fast forward eight years later, they have multiplied. They have put their army on the ground in government agencies and departments from the DOD to the FBI to the DOJ. They have weaponized justice. They have politicized the intelligence community. They have seized our Department of Defense from the men and women who have the audacity to serve and wear the cloth of this country, and they have tarnished their reputations, and they have led to disasters in Afghanistan, in Ukraine, in Israel, and elsewhere. But they blame us. And one of the main themes about government gangsters is we cannot take their bait. We cannot take the overcorrection approach that they want to government. What we must do is identify the people in government that are crippling our constitutional republic. What does that mean? First, we have to identify them. It's not a Republican or Democratic thing. The people that started Russiagate are back in power now. If you think, and the following took me two years to prove with Devin Nunes and the House Intel Committee, that a political party in the United States of America could go overseas and buy fake intelligence and hijack the FBI and go to a federal secret court and lie to a judge just to surveil the political opponent, that's conspiracy stuff. But that's what happened in our United States of America to our president the first go-round. What do you think these people are doing now? And there's no coincidences in government. Let me give you an example of the news that's been back in play thanks to great reporting out there about the details of how vast Russiagate was, how the intelligence communities were using operatives overseas. None of that happens by accident. When you go to England and a place like that and you say, you the FBI, you the intelligence community, go out there and surveil illegally Donald Trump associates, someone's got to authorize that. Now we know it was John Brennan and Obama who came in with the directive, but who issued the order on the ground to allow that to happen under the law? Gina Haspel, London station chief in 2016, who would later go on to be Trump's CIA director. She's the one who singularly blocked the report that you guys are now all familiar with about John Brennan's corrupt ICA. That report still sits in a skiff at the CIA under lock and key because she blocked Donald Trump's release of that report so you guys could see the corruption of their ways. The fight's not over. The coincidence don't stop there. Chris Ray, Rod Rosenstein ran the Russiagate cover-up operation, signed the illegal FISA warrants to surveil Donald Trump while he was president of the United States to rob us of our single greatest benefit in this country, our freedom to vote. Do you know where Gina Haspel and Rod Rosenstein work today? Gina Haspel is a national security advisor to Chris Ray's law firm where Rod Rosenstein is a named partner with Sally Yates. Since they left the Trump administration, do you think it's a coincidence that the architects of Russiagate, 
The greatest conspiracy ever perpetrated against the American people are all making tens of millions of dollars together at a white shoe law firm in the United States of America. Good, identify the problem. It goes beyond Brennan, it goes beyond Clapper, it goes beyond Esper, it goes beyond Barr, it goes beyond so many people you've heard about from the Trump administration. And the only way we are ever going to break that logjam is if we don't accept their projection. They, the radical left, have told us we are the ones who hijack law enforcement agencies. Are we the ones that sent law enforcement into houses of worship? That was them. Are we the ones that told parents that you will be dictated the agenda for your children's education? That was them. But they did it in the name of America, and apparently since they have the mainstream media, they're getting away with it. And here's the kicker about the media. They serve an invaluable purpose in our constitutional republic until they fail us, which a large portion of them have. And there is no deep state, there are no government gangsters without some of their corrupt actors in the media who continue to print the lies about Donald Trump's success, about our movement, and about our America First mission. And so what I started the conversation with is, it's up to us. We've got the greatest leader we could have ever asked for. But he's going to need some help from us. And so what do we do? What do you do in the next 240 some odd days till the next election? You pick one thing. You pick one thing, whether it's healthcare, education, sheriffs, law enforcement, countering drugs, narcotics, weapons, what have you, ending the forever wars, veterans affairs. You pick one thing and you go out in your communities and you do it 245 times. And you will see that message resonate because Americans across this country are tired of the swamp. And the swamp only exists because Washington, D.C. has perpetuated itself to overcome the will of the Constitutional Republic that is the United States of America. And we have to end that. And we cannot end that unless we do the following. Embark on a mission to educate Americans across the country. Now is not the I told you so moment. Now is not the time to go to America and say, we were right about Russiagate, we were right about Jan 6, we were right about the 51 Intel letter, we were right about Joe Biden's classified documents case, we were right about John, uh, excuse me, President Trump's classified documents case and the two-tier system of justice. We were right because we dared to put the truth out. We were right because we were fighting for this country and our future generation with facts. And that's what we have to arm the American people with. Every single day. And there isn't anyone in this room or watching that can't effectuate that change with the amount of great social media platforms and media that we have here, like Real America's Voice and everybody else that's willing to take that fight out there. It's imperative that you join the mission. We will follow Donald Trump's tremendous leadership, but we are going to need every one of you times a hundred across this scary country to make sure our message is received. Because here's the thing, 2016 is when Russiagate happened, we're in 2024, there's like 40% of this country that still think Donald Trump's a Russian asset because they believe the lies of the mainstream media. And who in the media is again starting to circulate that lie that somehow Donald Trump is still a Russian asset when we now know definitively the Russians preferred Hillary Clinton to win that 2016 election. How is that truth still buried? Because people like Hillary Clinton go back out there into the media and inject their fake narrative to try to seize you of your right to vote. So the main thing I'm here to talk to you about today is we have to join together in whatever way you want, in whatever mission set you desire is most important to you and do the following. Put the mission first. That is the single most important thing that we can do to help Donald Trump on his mission that he is on to help rescue our country. And when we wake up in November, it is not going to be just hope that pushes us across the finish line. We are going to look back together and say, we helped destroy the two-tier system of justice that is targeting Americans illegally. We helped destroy and identify an intelligence community that has gone rogue to seize our right to vote with their lies and fake disinformation campaigns. And we collectively joined forces to take on the most powerful enemy that the United States has ever seen. And no, it's not Washington, D.C., it's the mainstream media. And these people out there in the fake news.
That is our mission. I will be with you on the road every single day following Donald Trump's great leadership. But if you want the following to occur, then we got to go big on Trump. Do you want a secure border? Do you want to end CCP fentanyl? Do you want to stop the forever wars? Do you want to shut down the narco traffickers? Do you want to end human trafficking? Do you want to put our soldiers first and take care of our veterans and make sure our schools are free? Do you want to secure our communities and do you want a constitutional republic to live in? Or do you want to be dictated to by the lunatics of the mainstream media and the radical left? The choice is yours. I'm going on a government gangster's man on who's coming with me. Eight years ago, the deep state was real. When Donald Trump came down the escalator, national defense industry that has monopolized war and sent our sons and daughters uh, just in a couple of months here. So we're very excited about that. But here's the thing, our leader to be our continued warrior in the arena. But we have to fill that arena with the audacity to serve and wear the cloth of this country. And they have tarnished their reputations. No better place than to announce what you just saw, which is a joint venture with Steve Bannon and conspiracy theorists because we dared to call them the deep state. And when we fast forward eight year bait, we cannot take the overcorrection approach that they want to the benefit. We're blessed by God to have Donald Trump be our juggernaut of justice to be. Thank you. So I thought it would be 2015 in Trump Tower. The deep state was already moving at 100 miles an hour government. What we must do is identify the people in government that are criminal on the ground, in government agencies and departments, from the DOD to the FBI to the DOJ, to fight to the corporate bureaucracy that controls the swamp, who are going to take the fight to the pack with so many great Americans who represent Donald Trump's army to take this country. This is the movie is the first one, and it's coming out in the spring, uh, and we are going to do it together. What I want to tell this community, they have seized our Department of Defense from the men and women who have the fun to go on a manhunt of government gangsters together. And I'm so proud to be at CPEC. They have weaponized justice. They have politicized the entire